thank you for joining the Recursive, a community-born media platform for innovation in Southeast Europe. My name is Irina, and today I'm hosting one special guest from Belgrade. So when it comes to bringing the innovation community in the Western Balkans together, Costa Andrich is definitely a key figure and the focal point. Costa is partner and executive director of ITT Hub, one of the leading organizations providing support to tech entrepreneurs in Serbia. In 2016, he led the establishment of ICT Hub Venture, the first totally private venture capital fund which invests in early stage startups in Serbia. Kosti is one of the pioneers for corporate innovation as well in the region and actively helping companies of various sizes to embrace the startup methodology, mindset and culture in a way that it actually fits them. So hello Costa and welcome. Hello, Irina, and, and thank you so much for having me. And thank you guys for uh, launching this new platform. And I think it will uh, bring us even closer. Thank you so much. Uh, we have so much uh, already in the pipeline that we're going to introduce soon, but uh, stay tuned. So I'm just going to move on to our first question. And um, how did the idea of uh, about ICT Hub come to life in 2014? And what were the problems the organizations wanted to solve and the gaps that you wanted to bridge back then? Uh, well, it has been a long journey, I would have to say, and the whole idea started in um, 2013. And I will be uh, quite direct, uh, very naively. Uh, um, uh, we thought that it was just for us to open the, back then we called it a startup incubator, and then the, the magic will happen. So uh, we kind of, thought that we could copy paste um, uh, some Silicon Valley based model or Tel Aviv or Berlin, whatever was the tech scene uh, back then. And uh, actually we, we wanted to be the part of something that we, we saw that uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity, not only for ourselves uh, uh, coming from the private background, but, but also for the, for, the, for the whole economy. And it was so naive. Why? Because our hypothesis was that there is already something happening big and then everybody will come and we will work together and so on. And uh, basically when we started, nothing big happened. Why? Because the whole scene was, uh, the whole ecosystem was undeveloped. There were a couple of our uh, very friendly uh, organizations and our peers just um, uh, starting their own, their own uh, operations. And uh, maybe just to give you one example, uh, back then, there was only one organization or incubator, which was connected with the engineering faculty. And today we have only in Serbia over 50 or 60, 60 uh, different supporting organizations. And if you look at the map of different uh, players or stakeholders in the ecosystem, uh, how, how it should look like, uh, today it has, it has grown. So the, the question, uh, to answer your question directly, we had some wrong hypotheses. So, as a startup, we, we learned from, from uh, uh, we validated that we were wrong. So step by step, we started to, uh, to trying to solve and to, to create this puzzle of, uh, um, uh, I would say, um, density and a huge collaboration between different stakeholders, such as, of course, you, firstly, you need entrepreneurs, then you need uh, investors. Uh, at the beginning, at their early stage, you need supporting organizations. You need big companies who will actually be the good sparring partner and the first buyer possibly for, for these startups and so on. So we started solving, uh, uh, not only us, but also with our colleagues from the ecosystem, we started solving uh, one step uh, um, and one problem at a time. Um, you, you really brought me back like it was seven years ago, but back then the only source of early stage funding was actually a, a, a a venture capital fund coming from Bulgaria, and it, it was 11 and then launch hub. So most of the, let, let's say the, the, the startups which came out of those batches are still, today those, those, those folks are still valuable part of the community as serving as mentors or running some, some other businesses. So actually um, maybe in comparison to Bulgaria, uh, 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 Serbian ecosystem kind of grew, I would say organically. So we didn't have these uh, different EU programs or uh, 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 on the other way funded programs. So uh, we kind of had to, had to tackle uh, uh, different challenges uh, on our own. So uh, uh, when you compare uh, seven years, it's, it's a long period, especially the time when, when we live, but today uh, the, the ecosystem has grown and um, 
it, it looks much, much better. I think that that uh, collaboration, collaboration between different stakeholders is on much, much higher level. Of course, uh, moving up to the ladder, we're now facing new challenges and uh, looking forward how we can how we can push this whole thing closer to the vision how we see how we see the economy should work well i bet uh, it's been an exciting um, it's been exciting to be part of uh, this change of this transition uh, from the very beginning now you arrived at the at the next uh, maturity level and the next maturity stage of the ecosystem so how did uh, your vision for for the ecosystem evolve over the last 7 years um, I think that there is a, of course, for every every ecosystem or every part of the world, you can say we are special for some some reason, and the, the, the way uh, uh, I think most of the uh, undeveloped ecosystem used to work is that they copy paste basically everything which was coming from the uh, mostly from the Western countries is, is pretty wrong. Uh, so uh, you can of course learn a lot. Uh, but you always have to have in mind that there there are some specifics regarding. Uh, regarding our region. So uh, what we decided is actually to be the kind of organization which is uh, clearly uh, clearly uh, uh, privately oriented. So we try to solve problems by uh, um, uh, launching different products and services coming under the umbrella of ICT Hub. So uh, as you mentioned, we, we are the pioneers and that's, that, that goes for the whole region, uh, broader than Serbia. Uh, and now we actually operate uh, also from from Montenegro and Bosnia as well. Uh, actually, how we can bring traditional companies uh, to the innovation ecosystem? Why? Because we saw there is a clear need from them uh, from them to innovate, to develop, or to acquire new products and services. And on the other side, we we had a growing um, uh, startup community which actually was dreaming to uh, hit the IPO immediately or just to go abroad immediately and to kind of go global. Uh, immediately, and we saw the opportunity uh, uh, that you can validate or you, you can sell your product or service here on the Balkans to some maybe multinational corporation and then scale through their network. And that actually worked. That actually worked. And uh, um, today we have uh, great examples of some great acquisitions, mergers, partnerships. And uh, so that, that was kind of one, how to bring the actual, how to bring actual needs of actual businesses to the entrepreneurs uh, tech entrepreneurs here in, here in Serbia. Uh, you mentioned 2013. I can remember that um, startups, even the word startup, startup was kind of uh, for majority of people. It was a, it was a synonym for a bank loan. It's totally different now. Everybody would know to to, to explain you. It's a scalable business, which is run by some kind of technology. So it's, it's, it's even coming from the cementology. So that, that, that's, uh, uh, that's one, but even from the aspect of um, uh, uh, what are people working on, it's not anymore kind of uh, launching the Facebook, uh, Facebook for pets or something which we saw, or it's not reserved for, for youngsters. Now we're seeing, let's say roughly uh, people who are uh, uh, founders, which already have some uh, deep background in understand, understanding the industry and the problems they want to solve. Actually, I still have venture, which, which was the, actually the first private vehicle. And back, there, back then, there, there wasn't even a legislation here, so we can we can run a proper venture capital fund. So we decided to run the 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 I still have venture, which is a classical LTD, and to uh, actually buy shares into the into the early stage tech startups, and we invested in ten companies so far. Um, uh, I would say being being quite successful. I have some some future future plans for that. But in in a broader scale, um, I wouldn't say that the topic of innovation has become or startups has become a total mainstream. Looking at the region, but it 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 is becoming, and which which is good. A lot a lot lot of people people is now involved. The big question for all of us for the whole region is actually um, um, what is the next step. Considering the, the size of the countries and the population, uh, at least for us in ICT Hub, the division is that we have to be connected as a region. So only on the larger scale and on, on kind of uh, defining some specific uh, specifics of the ecosystem or a specific domain of innovation, we can we can compete uh, with some other regions or some other countries or, or, or part of the world. So so that would be kind of the, the, the big uh, next step or kind of uh, creating this, we like to call it internally kind of a big bet 
what could be the uh, uh, and we can imagine that in uh, five or six years from now you can wake up maybe in uh, I don't know Warsaw for example and you want to come for example to Bulgaria or to Belgrade because you know there is a there is a vertical ecosystem developed around maybe agriculture or innovation in agriculture or artificial intelligence who knows what but you have to have some kind of specific specific and something which we, in which we are uh, very skilled because of the size of the country we cannot be so diverse anymore mm -hmm. maybe i can share with you one good example um, Please do. gaming 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 industry is a great example uh, uh how it developed in serbia uh, firstly Nord nordius with their game top 11 which are one of the most played video games on the, on the facebook has actually uh, ran and, and initiated the, the vertical of gaming industry in Serbia, which would mean that now we have big companies uh, worldwide famous in gaming actually being present here in Serbia. We have small studios, we have startups, we have specialized gaming hubs, specialized events, specialized media, um, um, productive dialogue with, uh, with the government regarding some kind of policies. So, that would be a good example of how you can actually uh, develop in different policies on, on, on how you can um, how you can actually um, uh, attract people to come here to to uh, to practice their uh, game gaming skills and expertise. So providing their families actually to move to Serbia and and change the whole environment for for, for making that possible. So that's how we see the future, and and we do think that uh, besides gaming, we have. Uh, uh, let's say a couple of couple of chance, chances to, to grow a couple of domains. Would you be more specific? So in which verticals do you see actually the most potential for, for the Serbian ecosystem? What can I uh, tell you right now that in the next six months uh, we are going to deep dive into the ecosystems around the region. We are going to move every stone and talk, and talk to everybody and to compare that with some with some uh, um, with some broader picture of other regional systems. Uh, so I think we will, we will be able to make those bets, well, let's say in six months from now, that's one. Secondly, um, last year, I think it was last year, the Startup Genome, which is a, a US-based agency, uh, which is uh, um, doing uh, great surveys uh, uh, about startup ecosystem ha has uh, uh, done their job in Serbia. And they uh, they gave us uh, uh, great insights how we can move forward, and uh, 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 most of the organizations which are part of the ecosystem are actually a member of the Initiative Digital Serbia, uh, which was uh, which was which was um, uh, founded by the CEO of Nordius, the company I mentioned before, and all together we are working on on uh, on, on, on 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 challenging on actually solving this this. Uh, challenges uh, which we have to cross so we can move to the let's say globalization stage of the of the, of the ecosystem so the ict hub you mentioned you have a private investment fund uh, you have a startup program um i also also know that you have a corporate innovation lab uh digital transformation training programs a co-working space uh, can you tell us a bit more how all these instruments actually work together and what is the main goal for each uh, of them. Mm -hmm. um, let me let me share with you a very concrete example. Uh, so uh, I'm currently here in the hub. So it's a it's a wonderful space over 700 square meters in the in the heart of the Belgrade. Everybody's invited to visit us. I hope this Corona will will uh, go off soon. I'm definitely uh, so, coming uh, soon. Yeah, please do. Uh, so uh, yes, here in the hub, for example, we have a we have a. a um, it's a, it's a startup doing some great tech in, in HR uh, segments. Uh, we invested in them. Before that, prior to that, they went through our early stage program. Then we invested in them. And through our uh, corporate consulting arm, uh, we identified that one of our clients has exact need for that kind of service. And for us, it, it, it was for them to meet under the roof of, of our co-working space. Uh, uh, and they they, uh, they proceeded to go on working on together and today the startup is uh, very successful and they actually uh, they're actually selling that service together on, on the on the market so in, in kind of a sense uh, um, we we try we try to um, 
bring value for let's say both sides. Uh, when you when you mention corporate innovation, we we do we do not do only kind of matching with startups. We also help them how to develop new services or new products which would be maybe out of out of the the core of their business or something which which would be unknown. On the way, how would startup develop them? On the, on the very uh, lean methodology through iter iterations. So uh, uh, um, actually, the majority of our team is devoted to the corporate innovation. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a huge huge vertical and actually something which which uh, um, uh, help us grow in in a, on the on the on the financial level. So how can we support this through 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 through, through some kind of um, I don't know donations or similar? So we 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 uh, we developed a, a very attractive service and then uh, trying to to to, um, to to leverage for the both sides for the for the tech community and for the corporations because what. We see as a trend actually that uh, 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 startup uh, corporate collaboration is uh, is a something which uh, could be very attractive for for this for this region. Fortunately you... for us, a lot of R and D centers, a lot of R and D centers coming from multinationals are based here in the region. Um, some of them uh, acting from Belgrade. So they have an open open uh, um, uh, open field, and they have a. I would say green light from the from the HQs, so they can uh, proceed with uh, venturing with 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 startups from uh, to testing some uh, uh, testing some cool ideas, some some uh, some interesting things. So uh, we see that what I mentioned is that this density of these different stakeholders can be something which is sustainable and which which can actually allow us to grow. We can actually observe a very positive trend of uh, multinationals uh, trusting the region even more with their R&D. So I can definitely uh, see more future in the in the corporate innovation sector. Uh, but we have a tricky question: How do you get corporates engaged in actual meaningful um, innovation rather than just using it for for PR purposes? I'm not going to be like, like falsely uh, modest about it. So uh, I think I think uh, marketing and PR and something which we, we call the uh, innovation theater was was maybe the case in 2014 and 15. At least at least from our side. So we never work with companies which which don't which uh, um, do it only for the PR reasons. So uh, that's one. So that's our kind of value. Secondly, is that we make sure that uh, uh, on the other side of the table, uh, there are people who truly understand uh, why are they developing something new, why are they developing innovation, how are they going to support that, where is the budget, where is the team, what is the organizational structure, and uh, then when we when we when we see that somebody is serious and doing it on a strategic manner, uh, uh, we decide to partner, and it's a kind of a mutual relationship. So uh, we do recognize that some of the companies do it for the. Uh, it's very cool to put on your company wall like uh, value. It's new value. It used to be efficiency. Now it's innovation. But um, maybe it was the case for 2014 and 15. At least at the re at the markets where we uh, where we operate, uh, we see it less and less. And somebody could ask why. Uh, it's not because we are so cool. IST Hub is so cool. It's because uh, companies did start to lose revenue. They did start to lose revenue from their traditional and core products and services. And now it's not about theater anymore and being cool on hackathons. Now it's about what should we do and what are our new, new business models and how we can uh, reach them in a relatively, relatively short uh, um, time. So that, that's actually what, what happened. And that's not only common for, for this region, I think it's common for the for the whole world. Actually, um, every year we all organize our flagship event. It's called Corporate Innovation Conference. Uh, so this year it was um, visited by many, many colleagues and peers and organizations throughout the world. We had some uh, uh, most famous names from corporate innovation uh, participating online. That was one of the benefits of the COVID. It used to be offline conference, of course. And that is when we showcase the progress of the whole industry of the corporate innovation, and uh, and we think that the, this region could be very could be very proud on, on some 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 um, uh, good milestones we we, we all together achieved.
over the years, I've, I've seen from your uh, CV on LinkedIn, you gained professional experience all over the world. Uh, you've been also to the States, to the Netherlands, to Israel. Um, do you believe that the established uh, startup lean methodology and approaches need to be somehow adapted to the reality that we're experiencing on the Balkans? The region has tried to copy paste some models which were um, adequate for, mo uh, for, mo for more developed ecosystems. And we are, uh, for example, uh, we saw um, start of uh, accelerators around the region when the most famous uh, accelerators in the world abandoned the world, uh, the, the world accelerator. They didn't believe anymore in that, that model. So we're kind of late. Uh, but looking at the broader perspective, if you, if you ask me, and this is quite a personal, personal opinion, I think that as it used to be more like geographically connected to the, to the uh, Silicon Valley or to some, to some part of, part of parts of the world, it will surely stay like that. But I think that the innovation ecosystem will now be moved online. Let's put it like it will be in the, in the cloud, which is then opportunity for everybody. So. Uh, this density, which is needed for the innovation, will be, will be moved to the cloud. So that's kind of the twist. And for us in the region, it's a question how we can adapt to that fact. Of course, if, if I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. As I said, we used to be wrong in 2013. Uh, it's uh, actually a very good thing when you can learn from your mistakes, uh, especially in the startup. So uh, we will see. Um, I'm just going to come to my final question, um, and it's actually about the future. So um, what is next actually for the ICT hub, and how do you plan to contribute to the next maturity uh, stage of the, of the Serbian ecosystem, of the ecosystems in the, in the Western Balkans? Well, well, firstly, uh, I think that we cannot grow uh, if we're not part of the uh, bigger picture of the region. That's one. And as I said, in the next year, we will try to uh, at least lead one of the big bets, as I call them, uh, in terms of building a new vertical, uh, which could be kind of a symbol for the region. We would like to be uh, or part of the group which will actually discover uh, what could be, uh, let's say, an uh, uh, advantage of the whole region and how we can make these strong verticals around some industry or uh, topic or talent or, or technology. Um, that's one, and uh, uh, we like to, uh, of course, strategically, we know re where we're heading. Uh, when we say, it's very broadly when we say that ICT Hub is empowering innovation, but we know where we're heading. And But we always have in mind that uh, um, we should never never be like part of this, I, I like to call it ecosystem, like it's only, it's only our country, or only these two countries, it's only us and we are, you know, like, because looking at the broader picture, there, there are huge, huge uh, changes going on. For example, I know it's, it's becoming also a buzzword, but I do think, think that uh, the, when the blockchain becomes, uh, let's say, cheaper for, for the, for the uh, production, let, let me put it like that, I think that it will truly disrupt many, many industries. And uh, for us being, uh, being one of the players on the, uh, let's call it innovation market, we have to see and how we can leverage on those insights that we have because being a hub and having different groups of people, uh, investors, corporations, startups meeting here and discussing, you can truly have some uh, unfair advantage and having insights on how, how, how the future could look like. Uh, so we, we will see, and I think it's a, it's a, it gives us a, in IC hub a good purpose of why we exist and it's quite exciting. So as we, um, try to advise our corporate partners to, to develop this skill of being adaptable. So uh, you, have to, uh, you have to practice what you preach. So uh, that, that, that's our kind of a look, look on, on the future. And I, I do think so that Irina we will have a much greater communication in, uh, in a future period. And uh, for example, we are closely following what is happening with the uh, uh, the Vitosha partners uh, uh, launch hub, what is doing, and, uh, uh, and of course other neighboring countries. And I do think so that we have to work uh, um, much more on this density between ourselves. 
thank you for this answer. I, I definitely believe that uh, we are stronger as a community together on a regional level. Uh, I do believe that uh, also that when it comes to you know painting the bigger picture, uh, we the recursive will play our, uh, an important role in that, and we will try to include. Uh, all the various stakeholders in this process so that we position ourselves also internationally as a um, yeah, emerging innovation hub on the on the global map. Thank you also for this interview. It was uh, really nice talking to you. I can, we can continue probably for, for hours, but uh, let's do it next time live in Belgrade. Uh, sure. I'm going to take your invitation. Thank you for it. And uh, thank you so much. Nice talking to you. Thank you.